hello, hello. How is everybody doing? I hope you're having a good day so far. It's a beautiful morning here. You can see I'm wearing a sweatshirt because it's a holiday today. Um but welcome to this English lesson about measurements. We'll start in about 30 seconds. Let me make sure everything is working properly. I think it is. I think in about 20 seconds we can start. <clears throat> I'll go clear my throat over there. I always think I'm leaning off camera but you can all still see me so I don't know why. I I, uh, I should just blank the camera. We'll start in about seven seconds on uh, this English lesson about measurements. I hope you're ready. Two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about measurements. I want to be clear that this is an English lesson and not a science lesson. Most of what I say will be perfectly correct when it comes to speaking English and talking about measurements but I don't want to get into any debates about weight versus mass or whether uh you should use milliliters or teaspoons when making a cake using a recipe. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about measurements. I'm sure you will enjoy it. I will talk not only about the units of measure but I will talk about the things we use to measure different things like distance and time and all of those. I'll save time for the end because I think those are the simplest but uh we'll definitely cover everything you can think of. Well, pretty close to everything you can think of when it comes to measuring things in the world around us. Whether you're trying to measure how fast your car is going or how far you can jump. Um we will talk about that today. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about measurements. Hey, before we get started, just a couple of things. One, there's no link in the description below if you want to ask a question. Um I think that um something's slightly broken with YouTube. So, you'll have to rely on members to type exclamation mark link in the chat every once in a while. I know a few members will do that and that will pop up Nightbot giving you the link to the form. Um I'm not sure why. I can when I click the edit button uh I can't actually change the settings of the stream. So, when we do members only chat, I can't turn that on. So, I will still do members only chat. Uh, I'll just read the questions that come in green. Remember, please have some fun English conversations in the chat. Uh it was fun saying hi to a lot of you this morning. So, good morning uh and hopefully you have some good I see Hafia's typing out the word exclamation mark link. Yeah, I think you understand that it's I think that's just a little joke there. Uh Freddie Wolf says, hey, we have an Easter bank holiday in my part of France. That's amazing. Yes, it is Good Friday in Canada, we call it uh and it is a holiday. So, I'm home today. That's why I'm wearing a sweatshirt instead of my formal teaching outfit uh and uh I think I will still just go for about an hour. Uh but uh, I do have the day off. We have a few things planned today to do with the family. So, uh let me do a little audio check here to make sure things are working and then we uh will get started. Yes, looks like all systems go we would say. So, um should we get started? I think we should. Yeah, have some good English conversations. I will try to explain measurements as best as I possibly can. So, the English verb when you want to measure something is to measure. <laughs> I'm using the definition to define it. If I want to know how long to cut a piece of wood, I would measure it, okay? If I wanted to know how much something weighs though, I would weigh it. Even though you're still measuring it, we would probably say that you're going to weigh it. Um if I wanted to figure out how fast someone is running, I would probably time them. But these are all ways to measure something. It's the way to get a number that represents the speed or the weight or the length or the distance or the time. There are a lot of different things that we uh will measure in the world but the general term would be to measure. Um give me one second here. I just have to do one small thing. I don't have my slides on my other screen. There they are. Good. So, we're gonna start by talking about quantity. So, when you measure the quantity of something, the first thing I think of is if you are going to make something in the kitchen. You need different quantities of different ingredients in order to make something. 
one way to get those different quantities would be to weigh things but in my part of the world because I'm just an amateur uh cook or baker I generally just measure things and determine quantity. So, I don't weigh my flour or my sugar. I actually use things like this. This is a teaspoon. Now, there are two kinds of teaspoons in my kitchen. There's a teaspoon that I just grab from the drawer to put sugar in my coffee and stir it and this is not a teaspoon that you use to measure things but in my cupboard, I have measuring spoons like the one that's closest to me here and this measuring spoon is exactly one teaspoon. I actually think it's close to five milliliters. I'm not gonna get into that though. It's not a science lesson. I'm not gonna convert but when I make something and it says to put in two teaspoons of yeast or two teaspoons of sugar, I will grab this teaspoon, the one closest here and use that to measure that quantity. Um so, I'm putting the right amount in. We also have something called a tablespoon. Now, if you go to my kitchen, if you look at the far picture, that person is holding a tablespoon. It's slightly bigger than a teaspoon and we would probably use it to eat soup or something like that or to scoop ice cream if you want really big scoops but if I was making something and it said to put in two tablespoons of olive oil, I would use this close spoon here. This is a measuring spoon and it is exactly one tablespoon. Also, please notice the short form. Uh, form. TSP is short for teaspoon and TBSP is short for tablespoon. You don't want to get those confused especially if you're putting salt in a recipe. If it says one teaspoon of salt and you put in one tablespoon of salt, it's not gonna taste very good. We also use what's called a cup. So, again, in the far picture, you see a cup a generic term for something we drink out of. I have a cup of water here but this cup, I don't think this is exactly one cup. If I was making a loaf of bread and if it said to put in four cups of flour, I would use this measuring cup, the silver one that's closest to me. This is exactly one cup. So, if the quantity of flour for the loaf of bread is four cups of flour, I would use this precise measuring cup to put the right amount in. And then, of course, we do also measure quantity in milliliters and liters. Now, I know there are more measurements than just milliliter and liter but generally, those are the ones we use. When I buy milk, it comes in a four liter bag. So, that four liter bag has smaller bags in it. Um each bag is a little bit more than a liter. Um when we measure something, if it says it needs one cup of flour, I'm pretty sure that's the same as 250 milliliters of flour. So, we do sometimes use um more precise measurements than just teaspoon, tablespoon and cup. Sometimes, we actually use milliliter and liter and I'm sure there's things like decaliters and stuff like that but those are not commonly used uh in my part of the world at least when measuring stuff and yes, in my part of Canada, not in the whole country but in my part of Canada, you buy milk in bags. It comes in a four liter bag and then you have this special little pitcher here to put the milk bag in in order to use your milk. Let's talk about length and distance. So, length and distance are really the same thing. It just depends how much you're measuring. So, if I measure a piece of wood, I would measure the length but if I measure how far it is from here to my neighbor's house, I would then call it distance, okay? So, I always think of it this way. Length is related to things. You know, what's the length of your desk? Um what's the um I don't I have to be careful here because we also have width as well but when you're measuring something, generally, we're measuring the length. If I'm trying to figure out how far is it from here to work, um then I I would use distance but we use a variety of things to measure those two. Um probably the most common thing in a school would be a ruler. A ruler is usually 30 centimeters or one foot depending on what unit of measure you are using and I'll talk about that in a bit but most students will have a ruler um and they'll sometimes they have a smaller ruler that's only this long like 15 centimeters because it fits in their pencil case 
but they will use that ruler to measure things but they will also use that ruler just to make straight lines. So, if you use your pencil and a ruler, you can make a straight line with it. So, a ruler is a small wood or plastic um device, I guess, that is uh has the units of measure on one side or both and you use it to measure length. Um most rulers in Canada, by the way, have metric on one side and then they have what we call imperial on the other side. So, if I wanted to know how many centimeters something was or how many inches it was, I just use a different side of the ruler. We also have what are called tape measures or measuring tapes. I thought this was funny last night because I didn't actually realize we had two names. I've used both of these names. Both are very common. When you build something, you usually use a tape measure to measure things, especially if you need to cut something with a saw or with a scissors, but you could also use a measuring tape. I could say to Jen, have you seen the tape measure or I could say, have you seen the measuring tape? They mean the same thing. Um I'm not sure why we have two completely different names but we do. So, I guess that's just how English is. Sometimes we decide we need two names for something. So, um I always lose my measuring tape by the way. Sometimes I use my tape measure somewhere and then I leave it in a funny spot somewhere on the farm and then a couple months later, I can't find it. So, um I'm not even sure which. Did I use tape measure or measuring tape when I gave that example? I think I might have used both. Yeah, I don't even know why I use one over the other but tape measure and measuring tape. Hey, let's do some questions. Um uh, sorry once again that the form um sorry that the uh I don't have the link in the description below but uh I'm just clicking all over here. <laughs> Let me get to the point where I could actually answer a question. Uh I will once again uh let me see here. I'll put the link in the chat uh if I can remember how to type. There we go. I think I did. Uh and let me do a little audio check here for a sec. Okay, here we go. Um Ruslan says, hello dear teacher Bob. The benefit of your channel for English learners cannot be measured because it's priceless. Oh, thanks. Great use of the verb measure. Um or I guess that would be a predicate adjective. Don't don't quote me on that. Maybe my grammar terms are wrong. Uh but thank you. And summer is coming, my lord. Yes, it is getting warmer here. I'm looking forward to spring before summer though. Um we're gonna talk about measuring temperature in a little bit. Uh I don't want it to be 30 degrees. I want it to be uh maybe 20 degrees. In the chat, Key Park says, we use the soft tape measure to measure clothing. Yeah, so I forgot to measure uh mention that. In the picture, there was you know the the retractable tape that's used in the construction industry a lot but there was a soft tape as well that's used like if you have to measure the size of your waist when you go to buy a belt, uh you would use that that soft tape instead. From know that, hey, Bob, as a craftsman, are you good at estimating measurements or do you always use a measuring device to be on the safe side? Thanks, sir. Yes. So, here's a good example. If I needed to buy blinds for my windows, you know, you have curtains but you can also buy blinds. It's like a it blocks the sun out completely. I would get a tape measure and I would measure the window before I went to the store. I certainly wouldn't um so we have a funny word in English called guesstimate. It's a combination of to guess and to estimate and we often use it in a situation like that. Like I wouldn't guesstimate the size of the window. I would measure it before I go. I don't know if that's a real word by the way. Guesstimate. Uh let's see. Is guesstimate a real word? We're gonna check for a sec. Guesstimate is an informal English portmanteau. That means two words put together of guess and estimate. First used in American in America around the in the thirties. Um so yeah, we have a, f- a funny little word guesstimate. I like that word. Um Let's see from Renata. Hi, Bob. No questions. Just gratitude. Thanks, Renata. This topic goes over my head. Thank you as always. I need to focus on other languages. So, I am done here. All the best. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for the time you have spent here. Um hopefully, further lessons uh, are more 
uh, interesting or apl applicable. There's a, there's a nice big English word applicable to what you need to learn. Um Marina. Hello, Bob. You're amazing. Can we say can I measure your temperature when we have a fever? Little fix there. No, we usually take temperature. So, if I had a fever, I might take my temperature. If one of my kids had a fever or let's say they were warm, I might say I'm gonna get a thermometer and I'm going to take your temperature, okay? To see if you are running a fever. So, there's some phrases for you how you would talk about that. Um let's see here from Hamza. Hello, my teacher. Simple question for today. Why sometimes when I try to open a conversation or to communicate with someone or with an unknown person, I get nervous? Because you are a normal human being. So, when you talk with people you know in your native language, it's very easy and comfortable for two reasons. Because you know your native language and because you know the person. Normal human beings, in my opinion, get nervous when talking to someone they don't know. Even in your own language, if you meet someone new, you can be nervous. So, then when we add in the fact that you might be speaking English, a language you're learning and speaking to someone you don't know, the level of nervousness can go up. So, the remedy to that or the thing you can do to make it better is to practice a lot with some practice speaking English a lot with someone you trust and know well. That will really really help you. Um let's see here. Hung says, hi sir. I'm wondering why do Westerners consider 12 eggs as a dozen while Asians consider 10 eggs as a dozen? Are there any hidden principles used by Westerners? Thanks. So, we have no name for 10 of something, okay? Um I think even in French, maybe Freddie can help me here or Lolly Lolly. I think even in French, you have there's there's a term for 10 of something. Uh we don't really have that. So, we have a dozen which is 12 uh but if there is a 10 things, it's a pack of 10. We don't have like I don't know if there's dizium or duzium. I don't know. Anyways, I'm trying to make something up in a language that I don't know well enough to do that in. So, I don't know but um I'll tell you this. Hot dogs used to come in a pack of 12. You could buy a, a dozen hot dog wieners and most of them are now packs of 10. They've changed them. I think so they could charge the same amount but sell you less. So, so I don't know the answer. Challenging one. Uh let's see. Anne from Vietnam. I find it difficult to convert a unit of measure to another by formula. Do you often use a formula or calculator to convert Celsius degree to Fahrenheit? How do you do that? So, in Canada, because we use the metric system but we also live right beside the United States where they don't, a lot of our measurements, we we know both, okay? So, for instance, a simple thing to do, this isn't a science lesson but if they say it's going to be 10 degrees today, I know that's going to be about 50 degrees because I just double it and add 30. It's probably actually like 51 point something degrees or somewhere in there. Um so, we do have little mental tricks. We do. Um but also um for me, I guess I'm bilingual when it comes to measurement for some things like feet and inches and that. So, uh, so, sometimes I use a calculator or the internet to figure out what's the same but sometimes I can do a little bit of it in my head. Uh Dennis, just a short joke. How do you measure a snake in inches? Snakes don't have any feet. So, this joke is funny because what I call imperial measurement for length, you can measure in inches and feet and so, you can measure a snake in inches because it doesn't a snake doesn't have any feet. That's a good joke actually. Um let's see here. From Jack, little off topic but here we go. Hey, Bob. Good to see you. My today's question is what is the fastest way to speak English very fluently? Is it necessary to learn idioms and phrases as Americans use in conversation? So, first of all, if you've watched me for a while, I never I will never say you can learn a language quickly. Um the fastest way to learn a language is to spend a lot of time studying that language and to make sure you're getting help. So, for me, 
if I wanted to learn a language quickly, this is gonna sound like a lot of time. If I, if I wanted to learn Japanese, I would probably spend three to five hours a day learning Japanese and I would probably do it six days a week and then take a day off. And I think if I did that for a year, I probably would be able to make that that Japanese would be a difficult language for me. I would maybe be able to function quite well. But in addition, I would do a lot of reading. I would do a lot of listening. I would immediately or as soon as possible get a speaking partner and spend two or three hours a week with them. So, if you wanna learn something fast, you gotta you gotta put the time in. That's the uh, that's the end result. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the lesson. Here we go. Let me have a sip of water. Mm. Merci, Freddy. Il a dit, yes, une dizaine, douzaine. I don't know how hard I'm supposed to hit the N at the end. But uh, in English, we really don't like, uh, it's just a pack of 10, a 10 pack. Uh, okay, here we go. Meter stick, yard stick. So, we do have to clear something up here and that's that. I am Canadian. When I spell meter, it ends in R-E. If you were in the United States, you could uh, spell it M-E-T-E-R. But in my country, a meter stick, this is how we would spell it. And then you also could call it a yardstick. It's really just a big ruler. You probably will only find one of these in a classroom or in a place where they work with paper or clothing. Um, it is a long wooden stick. In Canada, a meter stick and a yardstick are actually the same thing because one meter and three feet are very close in length. They're not exactly the same. So, generally, one side of our meter stick will be in meters and the other side will be in feet and inches. So, by the way, a yard is three feet. Um, so, you might have a yard stick or a meter stick. It simply refers to a really, really for lack of a better word, a really big ruler. Very common in classrooms. Most classrooms will have a meter stick or yard stick. Uh, so, the teacher can easily measure things or draw straight lines on the blackboard or whiteboard. A measuring wheel. This is more common, I would say, either on a construction site or you might see one of these at a track and field meet. This is something that you push and as the wheel turns, for every rotation, it measures one meter or half a meter or um, two feet, whatever it's set to. And so, you'll see there's a little gray box on the bottom. You would set that to zero and then you would put the wheel down and you would walk and as the wheel goes around, I think it even clicks like click, 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 click and every time it makes one rotation, it adds that to the number on the screen. So, if you wanted to Let's say you had to put lines on a soccer field. You would probably use this to measure so it's the correct number of meters uh, or feet. A measuring wheel. And then I, I've never used one of these but you can measure distance with lasers. So, you could have a laser distance meter. You could point it at a wall and push the button and it would shine a laser and measure a little bit of the reflected laser. And then it knows how long it took and then it can figure out how far away that wall is. Um that would be pretty cool. I would love to try that sometime. I think that's how they measure how far the moon is from the earth. I think they can use lasers for that. Again, this is not a science lesson. This is an English lesson. Um so, a couple of things. We're gonna talk about the metric system quickly and the imperial system. So, in the metric system, we are gonna measure distances based on the meter. A meter is about, I try to get it on my screen, is about, that's half a meter. Here, let's do this. A meter is about this long. You can measure this at home if you think I'm correct or not. Um, with the metric system, <clears throat> everything is then based on whether it's part of a meter or whether it's bigger than a meter. So, a millimeter is very, very tiny. A centimeter is a little bit bigger. A meter is what I showed you and a kilometer is a measure of distance. Like I live I think 20 something kilometers from my sister, okay? So, if I was to drive there, it's 20 kilometers. So, we base our system of measurement in the metric system on the meter. 
Uh, and again, you can spell these ending in ER instead of RE if you are in the United States. But here, I would use that spelling. So, millimeter, very, very tiny. The imperial system, this is what we call it, an alternate system of measurement, uses inches and it uses the foot. This is about a foot. A yard is three feet and I don't even know what a mile is like 1,600 feet or something like that. Again, not a science lesson but an inch is about this big. Um, a foot is about this big. Um, by the way, an inch is 2.5 centimeters. A foot is 30 centimeters. So, the, those are rough conversions but um, if you were in the United States, you would be measuring things in feet and inches. Notice when I it's like one foot or three feet. You have to switch the word a little bit. Um, when I measure things, I measure in feet by the way um, and inches and if you wanna go smaller than an inch, you use fractions. So, half an inch, quarter inch, eighth of an inch. Um, if you want to measure extreme distances in space, you would use what's called a light year. Uh, a light year is the distance light will travel in one year. So, this is a way to measure really, really, really long distances. I think there's something called an astronomical unit as well. Is that? Yeah, I don't know a lot about that. So, again, English lesson. Not a science lesson but a light year. You might hear if you watch a science fiction show that something is you know seven light years away which means it would take seven years at the speed of light to get to that place. So, let's talk about speed. This is my least favorite thing to see especially if I'm driving too fast but when you measure speed, you're measuring how fast something is going. If I throw a baseball, I can measure how many kilometers per hour or how many miles per hour that ball is going. Now, if you are driving your car, you do not want to be going over the speed limit. Um, you don't want to be going too fast because if a police officer uses a radar gun uh, to measure your speed, you will get a ticket. So, in a car, the speedometer will measure your speed. Now, there's a funny thing here. Actually, I think I have slides on this. Let me see where are my slides. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a sec. So, when you start driving, the speedometer goes up uh, and this is a little bit weird for me. It measures your speed but it's a speedometer. So, even though it has the word speed in it, it's not pronounced the same way. So, it's a speedometer. Speedometer. You, you bar barely say the first little bit. Speedometer. Uh, and then, in Canada, our speedometers have kilometers per hour and miles per hour on them. Um, so, just in case we go to the United States, we know how fast we are going. That might be common everywhere in the world. I'm not sure. Um, so, here's an interesting thing. If you drive, it's measured in kilometers per hour. You will sometimes hear people say kilometers an hour. How many kilometers an hour were you doing? Technically, that's incorrect but in informal English, people will say that. They will say, I was doing 120 kilometers per hour or I was doing 120 kilometers an hour. Uh, both would be correct in conversation but the real term is kilometers per hour. Short forms are both there. In Canada, we use the KM slash H but KPH could be used as well for kilometers per hour. Um by the way, I don't know anywhere in Canada where this is the speed limit. That's pretty high. I think 110 kilometers per hour is the fastest I have ever seen. And then if you are in the United States, you might see miles per hour. Uh short form MPH and again, you might hear someone say, how many miles an hour was he going? He was going 60 miles an hour. So, in informal English again, you can use miles an hour instead of miles per hour but the correct term is miles per hour and again, we're measuring this. This is how many kilometers you would go in one hour if you kept driving that speed. So, if I'm driving 100 kilometers per hour, then if I drove for an hour, I would then have gone the distance of 100 kilometers. Temperature. I'm not sure if you can see this slide but you can see it's going to be seven degrees today. I can hardly see the slide. Let me put my glasses on. It's a little blurry. Eight degrees to nine degrees tomorrow, eight degrees tomorrow, eight degrees. It looks nice but look at the nighttime temperature. It's gonna be minus five degrees Celsius. So, then 
as you know, temperature is a measure of how hot or cold it is. Um there's probably a far more scientific description but generally in everyday life, we're talking about well, how how warm is it gonna be today? It's going to be eight degrees today. Um that little symbol on this thermometer, uh the little circle is the sign we use for degrees. So, wherever this is, it's 28 degrees Celsius. For me, that would be very warm. For some of you, that might actually be somewhat cool. That might be a nice day for you. Uh and again, I said thermometer a couple of times. A thermometer is a device we use to measure how warm or cold it is, okay? So, I have a thermometer outside. I can go outside and see what the thermometer says. Um we have a thermometer in our house that tells us how warm or cold it is in our house as well. Um but uh a thermometer is just a nice device to have. There's a number of different kinds. This is one you would put outside or on a wall. You can also get a thermometer that checks the temperature in your ear or in your mouth um or under your armpit if you're feeling sick and you need to take your temperature. Um and then there are also two ways to measure uh temperature. We use Celsius in Canada but you could also use Fahrenheit. Most thermometers that you buy in Canada will have both on there. They will measure in Fahrenheit as well as Celsius. You can see this one, the large letters are Fahrenheit and the small letters are Celsius. So, you can see it looks like it's about 21 Celsius. So, with my simple conversion, that would be 21 is 42 plus there is 72 Fahrenheit. So, it's not an accurate conversion but enough to know what to wear. Um if I needed like if I needed to know what the temperature was in Fahrenheit. So, again, Celsius pretty common as in the metric system. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Uh Fahrenheit a little harder to understand (laughs) sometimes. Um 32 degrees and 212 degrees Fahrenheit or something. Again, not a science lesson. Uh and then we're going to talk about weight. Yeah, let's start talking about weight and then we'll do some questions. I don't wanna get into the difference between weight and mass. Weight has to do with gravity. Mass has to do with the size of the object. And I again, let's talk more about how we use these words in English. Weight then is how heavy something is. The more something weighs, the heavier it is, the harder it is to lift. When something doesn't weigh very much, it's very light and easy to lift. So, sometimes we want to measure how heavy something is. Grapes and a lemon probably don't weigh very much but other things do weigh quite a bit. We use a scale generally to measure weight. So, you might have a bathroom scale. You step on the scale and it tells you you're 197 pounds or maybe it tells you that you're 90 kilograms. Um we use a scale 90 kilograms. I'm not sure what that is in pounds. That might be a bad example. What do you do? Uh, Anyways, um a scale is what you use to measure it. You might have a small scale in your kitchen. Instead of using teaspoons and tablespoons and cups, you might like to measure your ingredients by weight which is supposed to be more accurate but the thing you would use is called a scale and then we measure in kilograms or we measure in pounds. So, we have weights um for working out. Our weights are all in pounds. They look like this. On the end, they say 10 LB or 20 LB. Um if I lived in a country where you only had the metric system, they would probably be in kilograms. Short form is kg. The reason our weights are in pounds is because the vast majority of our fitness equipment is from the United States or made for the North American market and therefore, they are labeled, they are um their weight is in pounds because that's just you know, most fitness shows I watch, if it's from the United States, it will obviously be in pounds but if it's in Canada, it will as well. If I was to watch you know, a YouTuber from Europe, it would more likely be in kilograms. So, kg is short for kilograms. 
Don't know why LB is short for pounds but that is the short form for pounds. So, a uh, 10 pound weight is pretty light for me. A uh, 50 pound weight is very heavy for me. Um I'm not sure where you are in your uh fitness world but that's um that's how I feel about those two weights. Hey, we're gonna do members only questions but I have to mention again when I click on my control panel, I can't turn on members only chat. So, if you are a member and you ask a question directly in the chat, I will answer it right now. Um and uh I'll answer everybody who's been a member as well. Members and past members if I can remember. Let me just do a little check here. Okay, here we go. Let me get my glasses. Mode Egg says to Ralph, you know what? I heard the exact same thing from another German the other day. What do you find most difficult about it? Don't tell me you're not used to mushing words together. Oh, they're having a conversation. Ah, yes. Uh, let's see. Way speedometers pronounced sounds so wrong. Maybe I will never get used to it. That's from Ralph. Yeah, it is a unique way. I don't want to say it the wrong way because I don't like giving I don't like giving examples of how something is mispronounced because I don't want you people to start mispronouncing it. So, anyways, let me get a question on the screen and I'll wait for some uh from the chat from members. Ari says, well, during my speech at school, I got really nervous and started stuttering. Could you please give some suggestions, Bob? So, getting comfortable speaking in front of people is difficult because it's hard to practice, okay? You can't invite 30 people to your house so you can give a practice speech but you do want to practice any speech you have to give. You should practice it by yourself. You probably did this but you should also practice it over the phone to a relative who's can give you some feedback. If you do have people that you live with, have them all sit on the couch and give the speech to them. Um you do need to practice. It is a good idea. Um and that is really the only best way. As to the stuttering, uh, you might want to consult someone who helps with speech. Uh there are things. I'm not an expert in that field but there are ways to alleviate that as well. Um <clears throat> a lot having to do with becoming more calm, right? Uh let's see here. From Viet and then I will get to the chat. Hello, sir. What is the meaning of a dime a dozen and do you like to apply measurement in idioms? Thanks very much. I'm sure there are some idioms related to measurement. Uh a dime a dozen means very common. So, a dime is only 10 cents. It's very cheap. If something is a dime a dozen, we're not actually saying we're buying it. Um we're just saying there's a lot of them. Like, ah, when you go to market, like there's so many bakers there. They're a dime a dozen. Um so, you're just commenting on that there are a lot of something. Uh okay, from the chat, let me see here. Key Park says, yeah, no that says, do you measure the distance between the sticks you put in the winter so you can distinguish your lawn from the driveway or do you just put them the way you think? Oh, so there are official ways of measuring accurately but there's also um everyone in every country does this. There I think they're three paces apart or three steps apart. So, if I walk um if I I know if I walk where I my steps a little bigger than normal, it's about three feet. It's about a meter. So, you can kind of again, we can use the word guesstimate. I kind of just guesstimate that they're about nine feet apart, okay? I take three steps. It might have been four steps. Um and then in terms of the edge of the driveway, I just kind of ah, it's about a foot. So, no, I don't measure precisely, know that but uh, I do use that method. Mode Egg says, LB for pound is confusing for sure but it's less confusing than using the same word for book with a different gender if you know. <laughs> yes. Um Freddie says, Bob, imagining one day having a speeding ticket in Canada, would I have a little chance that the police officer would be kind with me if I claim that I mixed up kilometers per hour and miles per hour as I'm a French guy? No, they if I think you would get a ticket. I have not heard of anyone not getting a ticket for a while. I think the police in Canada have gotten a little bit ticket happy. They're very happy to give the boat. Ralph says, mushing is easy, getting used to it but we pronounce most of the time the first part of the word 
For the most English words, it's very easy to learn that this is wrong. Oh, yeah, that's true. We do sometimes emphasize a different part of the word, right? And it and it's unclear why we do that. No, that says a bit off topic, Bob, regarding the milk. Do you buy lactose free milk or both? I buy almond milk. So, uh, I drink almond milk. Rest of my family drinks normal milk. Um, okay, let me get another question on the screen. I'll wait for a few more in the uh, chat as well. Unsel says, by the way, if you're new here and you don't know what's going on, the lesson will continue in about seven minutes. Um, but right now, I am just answering questions from the chat from members uh, and then from the queue from other people. Unsel, hi, dear teacher Bob. Are there any special measurement tools you use in the field of agriculture? Have a great day. Love from Istanbul. Bye. So, I would say in agriculture, the most recent measurement tool would be GPS. So, a lot of tractors and combines are now equipped with GPS so that they know exactly where they are in the field. So, they can measure um exactly how much fertilizer to put based on soil testing. So, GPS is very important and it helps the tractors and combines auto steer as well. So, that would be the most recent and most um important one right now. Tanya, hello, Bob. I hope you're doing well. I always struggle with the pronunciation of the words kilometer and speedometer. Do you have any tip for me? Greetings from Germany. No, I think the problem comes from in Canada, it's not common to use the word kilo which is a short form for kilogram. We don't use but I've heard it in other TV shows from other parts of the world and the problem is because the word speed is pronounced that way but speedometer has that word in it but we pronounce it differently. So, I can, all I can say is it's kilometer speedometer. That's the I'll give you the two pronunciations and we'll go from there. Gosia, what is the source of your energy? You always seem to be so happy. Well, I I've spoken about this before and I feel like I should do a lesson someday called angry Bob, sad Bob or something like that because I'm a normal human being. There are times when I get really annoyed. There are times when I'm a little bit sad but you have to remember I'm only gonna make a video when I'm in a good mood. Like sometimes like last weekend or the weekend before, I made the video at the mall like on a Monday and then edited it and put it out on Tuesday because on the weekend, I didn't feel like making a video. I had scheduled to go make it on a Saturday and I just I didn't have a lot of energy that day. For the live streams, I think you could say A, I like doing it and when I do something I like, I'm happy but there's also something we call nervous energy. So, it's like for this is like speaking in front of people a little bit and so, I think when I have a bit of nervous energy, I'm it comes out as me seeming joyful as well but I'm also a pretty positive person. I haven't been that way my whole life but I'm generally quite positive. Uh let's see here. Oh, and what about money measurement? Someone asked. Yeah, I'm not covering that in this lesson. Freddie Wolf says, Bob, the temperature of minus 40 is very easy to convert because it's exactly the same measurement in Celsius and Fahrenheit. C'est assez drôle, non? It's also, it's not just funny. It's c'est assez froid. It's very cold as well. (laughs) Yeah, that would be, I have never experienced minus 40. I think the, in Quebec City, it was minus 30 something once but yes, that is an easy switch when it's that. Um, from Ivan, not a member but I'll answer this anyways. How do you measure the thickness of a metal sheet in Canada? So, um we have what's called gauge and I didn't, I'm not covering that in this lesson. We sometimes measure wire and metal in gauge like it's 12 gauge or 14 gauge. So, um but if it's thick enough, it would be in like eighth inch, three eighths inch, et cetera, et cetera. Um Hafia says the capacity of the mugs you received holds 12 fluid ounces, 350 milliliter. In Canada, do you use fluid ounces? Also a confession. I sent the mugs. That was the reason why I asked your for a few, your fa- your favorite color a few lessons back. Yeah, I I think I put them back in the kitchen. Oh no, they're right here. I haven't used them yet. So, these 
are probably a little more than a cup then. Sorry, I should put it here. So, even though this is a mug, we could also call it a cup. Uh, 12, I think eight fluid ounces is a cup. We use fluid ounces but not a lot. So, often if something says I need a certain number of fluid ounces, I usually convert it to milliliters um because that's easier for me to know. But thank you, Hafias. Now, I know where the mugs are from. Thank you for the gift. Jen and I love them. It's very cool. Um let's see here. Mode is talking to Ralph. That's the German I was talking about. Uh Tanya says, hi. No, that says I figured you'd sent them because I thought I remembered you writing that in a comment. Oh, I must have missed that. So, uh, not a lot gets by. Know that. He he'll figure stuff out. When you say something doesn't get by someone, it means you think they're smart. Okay. So, here's another example. Like, my mom is older but not a lot gets by my mom. That means it's hard to trick her or she's good at using little clues to figure things out. Ralph says, um more too confused. My mom is Dutch and the mixture of Dutch and German seems to be easy at first but can be even more confusing. Ah, I would never thought about that but that would be a little tricky. Hey, I'm gonna finish the lesson off. I guess I don't have to turn off members only chat and then I will take some time at the end to answer whatever questions are left. The rest of the lesson is going to go fast because we're going to talk about time and uh I I have a lot of slides for time but I'm gonna go really quickly because I think time is one of the first things you learn when you learn a language. When you learn a language, you generally learn colors, articles of clothing, animals, um like relatives like mom, dad, sister, brother and you usually learn time. So, you usually learn things like clock, watch, stopwatch, timer. These are the ways we measure time. Obviously, you know a clock is on the wall. We use a clock to tell time. You have a watch on your wrist to tell time. A stopwatch is generally used. By the way, we don't use hourglasses anymore. Unless you're playing a game, sometimes a board game will come with a little hourglass. That's what that is. But a stopwatch, you will see like at a track meet where people are running. So, a stopwatch starts at zero. When you push the button, it records how much time has passed until you push the button again. A timer, you set it to the number of seconds or minutes you want to time something and it goes down and when it hits zero, it beeps. Okay? So, the difference, a stopwatch goes up. So, when you click start, it starts counting seconds and minutes. A timer goes down. Um timers you usually find at like a kitchen or in a kitchen. Um you put something in the oven and you set a timer. Um or if you go to a basketball game, the timer goes down as the game goes along. Um so again, units of measure. Let's do this quickly. You measure in seconds. Things happen very quickly. If I run a hundred meters, it used to take me 13, 14 seconds. It probably takes me 20 seconds now. We have minute. So, seconds, minutes. I'm pluralizing. Hours. A day is 24 hours long. Well, the sun is up for not 24 hours but from one day to the next for the time it takes the earth to spin once, it takes 24 hours and then we have of course, days. The relation between them, there are 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60 minutes in an hour. There are 24 hours in a day and there are 365 days in a year. We also have months. So, we have 12 months in the year. Um this is August 2020. Not sure why I randomly chose that month but uh it's actually it's uh, currently March by the way. It's almost April um but uh, a month is a unit of measure for time over a longer period. And then of course, we have year and it's 2024. So, again, those are words if you are learning English that you've probably learned a long time ago. You may not be familiar with decade. A decade is 10 years or century which is 100 years. You've probably heard them and most of you might know them but that would be more units uh measurements of time. And then I'm sure there's more, right? I mean, with measurement uh in this lesson. By the way, this is the end of the lesson. So, that's the end of this lesson but um with measurement, there's always more ways to measure and more units. I just wanted to choose 
the most common ones for someone who's learning the English language. So, um anyways, thanks for watching. This was a little lesson on measurement. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Um oh, that's the big version. Uh let me finish off questions. I think I have seven or eight left and I'll do some from the chat. Uh let's see here. Need my glasses again. It's like glasses day. It kind of goes back and forth sometime. Um no that says but I have to admit I can't remember where the comment was. Oh yes. Yep. At least you remember the comment but not where it was. Hockey says if you cut out sugar from your diet it's really helpful for boosting your mood and making you feel happy and good. I agree. I do not eat a lot of sugar although I did have two cookies yesterday at work. Um oh Hafi has commented on a short channel video. I actually don't remember. Yes. Okay. By the way no video on the short channel today. Got ran out of time this week. Sorry about that. Uh that can happen. No that says I think you only mentioned whether Bob received a package perhaps with cups or something like that. That would be a that would be a big clue. Okay, let me finish off the questions. Six to go. Um from Lieto, the Colombian related to that topic. In Spanish, we have a word to say a package of ten like dozen. The word is decina or decina. Probably decina. Maybe English speakers can borrow our word to use it. Maybe we have a word and I'm just unfamiliar with it. That can happen too. Sometimes other English speakers find my videos and leave comments <laughs> and uh sometimes they try to correct things. Like I said in Canada milk comes in bags uh in a previous video. In this video, I made sure I mentioned that in some parts of Canada, milk comes in bags. Because it doesn't come in bags in every province. Mode the shorty. Hi, Mr. Bob. When you talk about people's height, you could say he's six foot or he's six feet tall. You use the singular in the first one and the plural in the second, right? Yes. Um he's six foot tall. She's three foot. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know why we like if I say I'm five foot. Ten and a half. I'm five feet ten and a half. I can use both and they are both fine. How tall is he? He's seven foot tall. He's seven feet tall. Yeah. In informal English, I'm I'm assuming if I see a basketball player and he's seven feet tall, that's the correct way to say it. But I could say, wow, that guy's seven foot eight inches tall. That guy's seven feet eight inches tall. That's really tall, by the way. Um, uh, I think you can use both, and I I would imagine because. It's your yeah, it's feet's probably the more correct one. But both would sound equally good to people. Well, what is the difference between tape of measure and measuring tape, please? Show me a pix. Oh, they're the same thing. So we can we can go all the way back to that. Oh, let's go forward. I think that's faster. Um so there's two pictures here, but that doesn't mean one is one and one is the other. This uh, both of these I would call a tape measure. Both of these I would call a measuring tape. So, we have two terms for both of these. I wasn't I should have I should have done that differently. Maybe I should have just put one picture but yes, both are definitely a tape measure. Both are measuring tapes. Um let me see here. So, from Sam Wu, dear Bob, what is the difference between accuracy and precision in measurement? Sometimes I saw both words in the measurement report. So, if okay. So, when we want to be precise or we want to be accurate, um it means you're using like a certified device to measure something. Like a measuring tape is like they promise you that the measurements are correct. So, if I said to you um how long does it need to be? And you said, oh, it needs to be three or four meters. I could say, hey, can you be more precise or can you be more accurate? It would mean the same thing. Can you go and measure it and tell me exactly how long it needs to be? Maybe it needs to be six meters, four centimeters. So, um I would say accuracy and precision are are very much the same thing. When you want something to be accurate, when you want a measurement to be accurate or precise, you mo- you want the person to go and measure it. Skittle, do you use Celsius or Fahrenheit? Mostly Celsius but I am completely familiar with Fahrenheit. Um I'm really hoping to go visit Brent this summer. Um I'm not sure when. Maybe end of June, maybe end of July. I gotta text him back actually because he asked me when when I thought I might come. Um if Brent said 
it's going to be about 85 degrees all week. I know how warm that feels. I know that that's pretty warm. If he said, oh, it's going to be 60 degrees all week in June. I don't know why. That would be rare. I know that, oh, I should maybe bring a jacket because around 50 or 60 degrees, I might wear a jacket. But generally, uh, the weather here is in Celsius. Um, from Tony, I'm going to sit an IELTS examination tomorrow. So, everyone who's watching, send like positive thoughts to Tony. Uh, a little bit nervous when talking before someone, especially a foreigner. Can you give me some advice? Have a good day, Bob. Yeah, I mean, this isn't great advice but take some deep breaths and try to relax. Um, it's hard to tell someone how to relax because it's very unique, right? For me, if I knew I was taking the test tomorrow, I would make sure that I went for a good walk today because that helps me get a good night's sleep. For me, being well rested is one thing I can do to be less nervous. Now, that being said, sometimes it's hard to sleep the night before because you are nervous and that's why I mentioned the exercise. So, it's a little late to practice your English because it's tomorrow um, but you might wanna just in your head visualize and pretend to have that conversation. That might help you a little bit. Um let's see from Freddie the Frenchie. Bob, what's up today? No question today. I can easily measure my English improving after each of Bob's lessons. Ce sont de grands pas. Merci beaucoup. These are big steps. Thanks. You're welcome. Um yeah, there are other ways to measure things, right? Like you can take a test to measure how uh, good your English is. How well you speak English. So, thanks Freddie for that. Um, merci pour les phrases en français aussi. Um, j'aime ça beaucoup. I learned a little bit of French. Uh, Hobart, what's the most long measurements? Light year? I would think so but I'm, I don't know much about measuring distances in outer space. Um, there's probably units larger than that but uh, certainly that is our, our current way of measuring the distance from the earth to the sun. There must be light minutes, right? Is the sun eight light minutes away? Something like that? I don't know. I don't I, now I'm just uh I was gonna say maybe I'll I'll uh I'll do another le- I was gonna say a phrase that's inappropriate about how I was talking right now. Um in English, how can I say this nicely? There's a phrase now I'm just speaking out of my and then you mention anyways. You can search for that. And you'll find how that phrase ends. Let's just say that. It's a very informal crude phrase to say that you're rambling or talking randomly. Um Andre in the chat says parsec. I don't know what a parsec is. That they mention that in science fiction sometimes, don't they? Like it's eight parsecs to the next galaxy. Maybe that is bigger than a light year. Might be another thing to look up. Uh anyways, uh bye. Have a good day everybody. It's been about an hour. Thank you for uh watching and learning a little bit. I am now going to go and enjoy my day. Again, apologies. No video on the second channel today. Ran out of time this week and as you know, if you watch the second channel, that's the first thing that I don't do if I run out of time. So, anyways, thanks for watching this lesson. Remember, a shorter version will come out in a few days. Rewatch that one to help strengthen what you learned today or to help learn maybe things you didn't quite understand. The version that comes out in two days has very accurate subtitles. They're not perfect but they're 99% perfect. So, um sometimes that helps a little bit. Uh John says one parsec is three light years. Ah, there we go. Learn something new today. Uh Hafiez says thanks for today's lesson. Always hydrate. Yeah, I didn't drink enough today I don't think. Um this is eight fluid ounces and it looks like there's about five fluid ounces left. I I I know that because on the bottom I would show you but then I would spill the water. It says eight fluid ounces which might be one cup actually like an actual cup. Uh always hydrate. Enjoy your soup, hot chocolate drink. Have a great Easter. Uh thank you, Hafiez. Vanessa says have a good day. Thank you, Raphael. Hello, Key Park says thank you, Bob and bye. See you, Key Park. Hockey says thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Uh, bye to Raphael. Sam Wu says thanks. Bye to Redfish. Uh <laughs> Redfish, do you even have a second channel? I do. It's called Bob's Short English Lessons. Uh Noriko says, been a while. I'm so glad that I joined a little bit today. Thanks. Good to see you, Noriko. Know that says bye to everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Know that. See you. Uh B Seattle says it was a useful lesson. Uh I excellent. Good. Kaka Chen. Bye. Have a great weekend. 
Yannick, see you. Have a good day too. Freddie Wolf says, bye and thanks, Bob. By the way, each lesson seems to me that one hour is shorter than 60 minutes. That's good. At least you don't fall asleep. <laughs> Enjoy your Easter holiday. Thank you. Jin Ha says, this moment is my first time that I attend your live. Oh, good to be here. It's 5 a.m. for me now. I thought I could never attend your live but now I am here. Next time, I will get up early so I will watch from the start. Well, good to have you here, Jin Ha. Uh, Jin Ha Lee. Lolly says, bye. Bye, Lolly. Uh, oh, to know that. Good. I like it when you guys say bye to each other as well. Tanya says, bye. Hafia says, bye to everyone and me and I'm gonna wrap this up. Bye, Yannick. First day here. Oops, too late. Maybe next week, Yannick, maybe you will get here on time. Anyways, bye everyone. Have a great day. Uh, thanks for hanging out and learning a little bit of English. Uh, see you Tuesday with another new lesson and uh, next week, Friday with another live lesson and I think next Saturday, next Saturday will be live. There are two live lessons next week and then a live lesson on the Monday because it's the, <laughs> the eclipse. A lot of live lessons coming up, people, in a week. Anyways, bye.